So in this module, we talk about active filters. So active filters are realized with the help of operational amplifiers. In earlier circuits, we had seen such configurations where R and C can be combined and VI of T is the input, VO of T is the output of the circuit. Another combination was something like this. We, we had this inductor over here. So that was R and L. Similarly, we can swap the values of capacitors and the resistors, and we can have the same configuration and we obtain the transfer function of these. So these kind of circuits were called as passive filters. All right. Why they are called a passive? Because there is no gain uh, produced by the circuit. Output is not amplified over here. Rather, uh, we, uh, we just have uh, input and that the signal gets filtered by the R and C components. These components do not introduce any gain into the circuit. Uh, about the active filters, uh, we have the gain, that's why they are called as active filters. So how to realize this filter? So let us see uh, this circuitry. We have operation amplifier with a gain A, and we have a resistor R2 and R1 that sets the gain. So this is uh, the basic configuration of the inverting amplifier. But what about we replace this resistor R2 by means of a capacitive element? instead of R, we have capacitor C over here. Or we can say that uh, we have this resistor R2 and we have resistor C2 right over here. So we have an introduction of this capacitance here and how to analyze this circuit. So we know that the node voltage here is V2 node voltage here is V1. Okay, and there is a virtual short here because we assume the gain is infinite, then VO over VID is equal to gain. So if we if the gain or or basically we say that VO over A is equal to VID. So when gain approaches infinite, VID goes to zero. So that's why we say that VID is V2 minus V1 that equals to zero if gain A tends to zero. So how to analyze this circuit, right? We know that V2 is equal to V1 is equal to zero due to virtual ground. And we can apply the the current that flows through the circuit I, the current trying to enter the operation amplifier is zero because the infinite, because it offers the infinity input resistance. Then therefore this current, same current passes through the combination of R and C in the feedback path. Okay. So what we write here, uh, we know that that's, that's the current through these uh, uh, into current I1, it is given as Vi minus 0 divided by R1, that is the input current I1. And that can be equal to the current that passes through this branch. So we say that this, this forms or impedance, a combination of R and C. Let's call it as a Z of S. We are operating in the S domain. 
where x is the complex variable. So we can write here 0 minus VO divided by Z of S. So that's the impedance Z of S. So Z of S here is parallel combination of register R2 and capacitor C2. So here comes the S here. So you see here in the value of the resistors, this is R2 into 1 over C2S divided by R2 plus 1 over C2S. So we say that Z of S is having this value. That's our Z2 of S. Okay. So we can see that uh, this expression can be written as and this leads to VO upon VR. So we are in the S domain, so we'll write V of S divided by V R of S minus Z of S divided by R1. So that is our the gain, which is the ratio of output by input. So what we can do is we plug in the value of Z of S into this equation. So we know that Z of S is R2 divided by R2 C2 S plus 1 divided by R1. And of course, it's, it's, it's a minus sign there because uh, we know that here it's a minus sign. So we'll write minus R2 over R1. 1 by 1 plus R2 C2 S. So that's how we get this values. So we put S equal to Z omega because we want to obtain the magnitude and the phase of the transfer function. What is that transfer function? V of J omega divided by V i of j omega. This is our transfer function. And this is the phase. So these expressions become like this. as we can see here. And we define now, let's define omega c is 1 over R2 C2. This is called as cutoff frequency. Therefore, we can write this way. Okay, and magnitude of this expression, let's call it as equation one. So the magnitude would be what we see is the magnitude of this R2 by R1. One divided by a square root of one square plus Omega whole sphere. So that's our magnitude. And the phase is 
would be the phase angle of the denominator angle of the numerator minus angle of the de denominator right so it would be angle of the numerator here the imaginary part is zero right so tan inverse of zero is zero and the denominator side your real part is one so it's an inverse of omega by omega c fine so that's the phase phase angle so let us analyze uh, at omega equal to zero your magnitude would be what is the value of magnitude it would be let us put the value of omega zero this is the magnitude okay so we try to put omega equal to zero so the magnitude is simply a dc term which is r2 over r1 okay divided by square root of one plus omega c whole square i think so that is R2 over R1 square root of 1 and the phase would be right here we have minus tan inverse 0 by omega c so that is 0 so these two values we have for the magnitude and this one so how to how does it reflect uh, in these in the output diagram we we can draw the output diagram right over here let's say we have this point omega is equal to 0 And here we have a magnitude of the gain. This is nothing but the gain right here. This one, this whole term. So we the value of it at omega is equal to zero is R2 divided by R1. And the phase would be zero. So let's say at omega is equal to zero the phase five this this term we call it as a phi or phi so that that is the value let's say it is zero is here what about at omega equal to omega c the magnitude takes the form we have this equation to focus upon so omega equal to omega c that's the one by uh, one by root two so this would be R2 over R1 divided by square root of 1 plus omega C divided by omega C. One. Is actually square right yeah so it's like uh, r2 by r1 divided by root 2 point not seven not r2 over r1 so we see here at omega equal to omega c the magnitude drops from the original value of r2 over r1 
and the angle what is the angle it's minus 10 inverse omega c over omega c that is minus 10 inverse 1 so it's minus 45 degree so how does it reflect in the output waveform we see that So at omega I equal to omega c, this is the point. So ideal value should be like this, but the, the gain goes like this. So this value right over here is 0 0.707 R2 divided by R1. That's the value. And the phase is zero. And then at this point, the phase also coming to minus 45 degree. What about when omega tends to infinity? So in that case, we see magnitude would be square root of one square plus omega is infinite now by omega c whole square. So this term one plus infinite. So it's like With zero, five, an angle minus ten inverse omega is infinite now, right? So minus ten inverse infinity is minus ninety degree. So again, the when omega tends to infinity right over here, we see that omega goes to infinite, the magnitude is zero, and when right over here. minus 90 degree because omega goes to infinity okay so this is uh, what is this characteristics of this is magnitude versus frequency omega this is phase versus frequency omega and this is the output response so it What about this circuitry uh, in another way? What is the expression for the output? Let's say we have a resistor, we have this capacitor. Output voltage is BO, C, R, and we have V in. The positive terminal is grounded. So what we see here, we have a voltage at this node V2, Voltage at this node is V1. The current that flows here is I1. The current tries to enter inside the operational amplifier is zero because of the infinite input resistance of this amplifier. Therefore, the same current goes through the capacitor. Okay, so we know that V2 is equal to V1 because of the virtual ground that is equal to zero. Therefore, the current I would be V in divided by R the same current that passes through the capacitor, okay, uh, that would be equal to IC. And the IC is given by C, zero minus VO divided by V1 
derivative of 0 minus V O divided by D T. That is the current through the capacitor. So it is C minus C D V O by D T. And we know that I is equal to I C. The same current goes through this current capacitor. So we can write V in over R is equal to minus C derivative of output voltage divided by input voltage. And what is the voltage, output voltage? So when this current passes through the capacitor, it charges the capacitor and it develops the voltage across this called as VC. VC is nothing but minus VO, right? So voltage that is at across the capacitor plates. Okay, and the capacitor voltage VC is minus VO, and we know that the voltage across the capacitor is given by 1 by C integration 0 to T current through the capacitor ICDT. So, what is the value of this capacitor? You can write value of the current is this. And value IC is equal to I, which is we can write V in over R dt. And this VC is nothing but negative of the output voltage. So output voltage is negative of the VC. So we see that VO would be then minus 1 by RC integration of 0 to T. V in dt. So that's the output expression. So we can see that output is an integration of the input signal. So we have some signal applied, let's say it's a sine wave or a pulse or triangular wave. We will have integration, integrated waveform at the output for this signal. So that's how it, this circuit also works as an integrator is also called as integrator, so integrator or low pass filter, all right.